be back on this Sunday. We give God all the honor and the glory. Amen. One of the things we're trying to do, and uh, you know, friendship, I like to keep you uh, in line with all of what we're trying to do. Now, I don't think I'm going anywhere, to, anywhere soon. <laughs> but we got to look toward the future. Amen. So I thank you for the way that you're re receiving uh, uh, Brother Rich. And, you know, uh, churches choose uh, pastors in the wrong way. They bring folks in they don't know. Absolutely. <laughs> And they, and, and they, and, and look, anybody that's preached for two minutes got a sermon. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> like I say, if, I'm, if, if, if I go somewhere and I want to impress somebody, I'm going to bring crystal shells with me. And I'm going to just say, no brag. <laughs> that boy can preach. <laughs> Everybody can, anybody got one of those. Amen. But, uh, so just trying to give our brothers... Uh, and, and, and again, and Brother um, Wayne, you know, he had surgery. And so uh, uh, he may be out another, another few weeks. And, you know, he had told us the last time he was here that uh, pros he's in the process maybe of, of moving, seeing what God is saying to him. We want to keep our brothers in, in prayer. Yes. Amen. So uh, our brother preached on the power of the gospel. And I want to go to 1 uh, Corinthians 9. And uh, starting in verse 15, what we're going to talk about, the message today for you is the necessity of preaching the gospel to your family. Amen. Amen. The necessity. Of, and the, what we're looking at, you know, uh, we're talking about the uh, st staying focused. Last week I mentioned staying focused, staying focused. And it's the gospel message, it's living the gospel. So the messages are, are telling us, Here's what we do. It doesn't matter who got elected. Uh, it doesn't matter whether we're in the last days or the end times. None of that stuff matters. And uh, we get distracted and people start coming up with all kinds of things. You know, I remember back in 1988 uh, uh, and a guy wrote a book and he said there are 88 reasons why Christ is going to come in 1988. Oh my God. When that didn't happen, he wrote another book. 89 reasons why Christ is going to come in 1989. I, I, I think folks are still buying his books. <laughs> if he lived long enough, he's probably going to be right. <laughs> but that's not the way. We, we believe in the inerrant and infallible word of God. The necessity of preaching the gospel to your families. In 1 Corinthians 9, 15, Paul says, but uh, I have used none of these things. Now, what Paul is saying in this verse is that being an apostle, that he had the right to be paid. He had the right to be married. He had the right for certain privileges. He had those, but he didn't use those because he wanted the gospel to not to be hindered and, and people looking at, you know, you're doing this for certain reasons. So Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 15, I've used none of these things. And he says, nor have I written these things. I'm not writing now that you will start giving me money. I'm not, that's, not a, it's not, that's not what it's all about. It's only about the gospel. And uh, so he says, uh, I haven't written these things that it should be done so to me. For it would be better for me to die than that anyone should make my boasting a void. His boasting is he's boasted in the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is free and he's not asking for anybody to take care of him, although it was what they should have done. Amen. Okay? So verse uh, 16, he says, here's what I'm, and Paul says, let me explain to you what I'm talking about. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, for of necessity it is laid upon me. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. And so what he, he's saying here, and that's the message, necessity of preaching the gospel. And so Paul was an apostle. And you remember, he's on the road to Damascus. Mm -hmm. And what he's going to do is put people in jail, Christians, so on and so forth. Acts chapter 9. You read the story, Acts chapter 9. Lord Jesus Christ meets him, and he's knocked to the ground. And Paul is told by the Lord Jesus Christ, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. And so... Paul says later on, 
in his testimony, he says, I was not disobedient to that. Amen. So what he says here in verse uh, 16, necessity is laid upon me. In other words, God called me. He said, now, if I just decided out of the goodness of my heart, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to preach the gospel. I'm going give to give up my, my, uh, you know, my titles and all that, give up my money, and I'm just going to preach the gospel. He said, well, if that, if that was the case, it'd be different. He said, but that wasn't the case. Jesus didn't call, didn't uh, knock me down and say, I, I, I got a message for you. How would you like to preach? It's up to you. And he didn't tell him that. He said, look, this is what you're going to do. Amen. This is what I've ordained you. You're going to be for kings. You're going to suffer many things. You're going to preach the gospel. This is it, bro. Amen. So Paul says, that's where I am. This, that's why I can't boast about this thing. And so me, I'm not an apostle, I'm a pastor. Amen. And uh, necessity is laid upon me as a pastor to, pr to pre preach, to teach, to live this word. Yes. Because you know, I, I wasn't uh, just uh, living my life and saying, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to just quit General Motors and, uh, and out of the goodness of my heart, I'm going to preach the gospel. No, I was in necessity. I was called. And, and matter of fact, the calling was so strong to teach and, and to preach. And I, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, uh, until you open the door for me to do this, uh, I'll just go out in the woods and tell the trees to repent. <laughs> yeah, I got you, my sister. Uh, like, see, Jeremiah said, it's fire shut up in my bones. Uh, I, I, I couldn't, I, I had to do it. Uh, I, so... You know, and so I would practice it. I would do all kind of, I had to do it. That's what Paul is saying. Necessity is laid upon him. Necessity is laid upon me. And my message to you today is necessity is laid upon you to preach the gospel to your kids. Amen. That's where it starts. Amen. Amen. It, you you got a calling. You may not be called to, as an apostle, an evangelist, a prophet, teacher, or whoever, a pastor. But you call to your family, to your kids, to your husband, to your wife. If you're single, you call to live for Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit and declare the word wherever you go. Amen. That's your calling. Necessity Amen. is laid upon you to do that. Yes. See, and, and, when, when, and I, uh, I learned this a long time ago. People say, well, it's the pastor's job to uh, go out and get the sheep. I said, no, it's not. The, uh, the shepherd doesn't make sheep. Amen. Sheep make, make sheep. Amen. It's the shepherd's job to pastor, the shepherd to teach. That's the pastor's job. But it's the, it's the family's job. And when churches are strong, it's because families are strong, and they're led by people, husbands or wives or whoever, grandparents, but somebody who's, who's strong enough to stand up and declare the gospel of Jesus Christ, necessity is laid upon you to do that. So Paul says in verse uh, 17, 1 Corinthians 9, 17, if I do this willingly, I have a reward. That's what he's saying. If I just on my own doing this, I got a reward. But he said, but if against my will, he's using a strong term. So God didn't call me against my will. But what he did, he made it so strong, it became my will. Amen. Amen. I got to do it. I, I, I got to do it. He says, I have been entrusted with a stewardship. So all of us are stewards over the word of God. Amen. And in your, it starts in your homes. And so there are things that happen in home that help transform our lives. Amen. 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 And so... I, and so I remember being taught in uh, schools or taught in the home. Uh, we learned the uh, Ten Commandments and taught in churches and so forth. But all this was augmented by what was going on at home. See, it, it wasn't you go to the church and the church say don't steal and your daddy is a thief. Because <laughs> if your daddy is a thief, I can tell you until I'm blue in the face, don't steal. But if, but if your daddy is a good, a good thief, you're going to be a thief too, most likely. Amen. <laughs> because you're following those steps. It starts at home. It starts at home. And so, you know, I, I look at the fact that I've worked all my life. And, 
and, and the Lord uh, brought it to my mind. He says, nope, you know, your father, you know, he, he was around for a while, but he left. Your uncles took over. Nobody ever told you to go to work. Nobody told you you had to go to work. You just saw them working. Amen. There wasn't a man in my family that, 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 that laid around the house. And so I, I assumed, you know, and again, not to be racial, but, I, but there wasn't a black man laying around. I assumed that as a black man, I had to go to work. They all went to work. And, and we learned those examples, and they start in the home. They start with, uh, with, with our parents. And like I said before, uh, when, when uh, Steve Irwin, the, Ale the crocodile man, started raising up his kids, fighting crocodiles, and he died, and now all of them are crocodile people. See, look, if, this, look, if you can lead your kids to fight crocodiles, <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to try to lead mine to follow Jesus. I mean, I'm, I'm watching his family. This, this man is dead and gone. And they, and they, they talk about their daddy. And they, and they said, my dad would be proud of me. See how I'm doing this? My dad taught me this. Amen. A lot of things are caught more than taught. Amen. 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 So the Apostle Paul goes on. And uh, let me drop down to verse 19. And we, uh, just give me, a couple, give me a couple more minutes, okay? He says, for though I be free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. Verse 20, 1 Corinthians 9, uh, 9 and 20. To the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law, not being without law toward, uh, toward God, but under law to Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I become all things to all men that, uh, that I might by all means save some. Amen. Amen. Paul had what, what we call a save some strategy of the church. Amen. The save some strategy. Oh, it's impossible to save everybody. <laughs> it's impossible to save everybody. It's very un improbable that you save nobody. If you're living for Jesus Christ, you're declaring the gospel, it's improbable. Even Jeremiah, who didn't have a convert in his life while he lived, had a whole lot of converts after he died. It's in, so it's impossible to save everybody. It's improbable when you're living for the Lord, and, that, and we're living here at Friendship Baptist Church, that we don't save somebody. Amen. Again, okay? And uh, so it's impossible to save all, and it's improbable, improbable that we save none, but it's imperative. We got to save some. Amen. We got we to got, uh, save some. Amen. And so I look at my family and I say, look, uh, uh, I got my, my daughter, I got my son, I got 10 of them. And, it, and, I, and so I say, for 10, you know, I want all of them saved. I'm just going to be greedy. I want everyone saved. There ain't none of my kids and grandkids I don't want saved. Amen. I want them all saved. Amen. It may be impossible, but it's improbable that none of them get saved. Amen. Not if I'm living right and, and, and preaching this gospel. Uh, in season, out of season, they may not want to hear, but it's improbable that none of them should get saved. But it's imperative that somebody, that's the kind of strategy we got. And so uh, as we come together, and we've been together for, uh, for a long time, and, and we watch God will bring people in, and uh, people will come in and join, and they will, they will uh, follow the Lord because it is imperative. We become all things to all people. Amen. That's why I'm not a black preacher. I'm a preacher. Because I ain't trying to just get black folks saved. I'm trying to get folks saved. Amen. If you've been created in the image of God and uh, you know the Lord, you're my brother in, or sister in Christ, and we're going to work on that. And if you don't know Jesus, we're going to try to get the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. Amen. It is imperative to save some strategy 
of the church. Amen? Yeah. And so, look, if, if I'm here uh, and, and if we're here and years go by and nobody gets saved, I'm going to start crying to the Lord. Something wrong somewhere. Amen. I'm, I'm going to quote Dr. Tony Evans. If we hear all this time and ain't nobody coming to Christ, <laughs> there's a dead monkey on the line somewhere. Somewhere. So it's impossible, Brother Rich, save everybody. But if you're living for Christ, it's improbable that you save nobody. So it makes it imperative that we save somebody. Somebody. Praise the Lord. Someone say, you may think you're a leader. Amen? Say, I'm a leader. But if you're taking a walk and ain't nobody following you, that's all you're doing is taking a walk. Because if you're a leader, somebody's going to follow you. And so, friendship, I love you. I thank you. I praise God for you. And, uh, we're, and we're working in this thing together with our strategy. And so uh, uh, as I see people come in, and so we're studying the word of God. We're preaching the gospel. We're teaching the gospel. And, and again, uh, it's imperative. It's necessary that you and I start in our own homes so that our young kids will be brought up in the fear and nurture of the Lord. Amen. All right? Amen. All right, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, this is only for crystal shells. <laughs> uh, no brag. Just fact. <laughs> Just fact. Amen. Amen. No brag, just fact. Jesus saved all kind of folks, and they couldn't, they couldn't stop him. And he lived and he died. They couldn't do anything with him. And I always loved that part when, uh, when, uh, when they came in the Garden of Gethsemane, about 400 soldiers, and they said, whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am. They fell back. He said, I am. No brag, just fact. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the conviction you've given us. Will you guide us and lead us in the path of righteousness? And Father, if there are any here who need to make that decision about coming to Jesus Christ, may they make that decision today and receive Jesus. I pray right now they would call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.